Okay, good morning, everybody. As we start the chitas of the day, we go to the Chumash. Today is Thursday, the 13th day of Tammuz. We are holding, I'm sorry, today's Wednesday. 13th day of Tammuz. We're holding in the fourth uh, portion of the, the uh, portion of Balak. We are holding right in the middle of the story of Balak and Bilam and Bilam is hired to uh, by Balak to curse the Jews. So we're holding on chapter 22, verse number 39. Vayela Bilam in Balak. So Bilam went together with Balak, Vayavi Kiryas Chutzes. And he came to the Kiryas of Chutzes, a city of streets. It actually says a city full of markets, full of streets with men, women, and children in its streets. As to say, they say, have pity on these uh, people. Verse 40, by Yisrael, Balak, Bakar, and Balak brought in a sacrifice with sign of cattle and sheep, by Yishlach, the Bilam, the son of and he called to Bilam and to the, uh, the ministers that were with him. That's a Bakar, same Dava he gave a small number of uh, only one bull and one sheep. Verse 31, And they came in the morning and Balak took Bilam and led him up to the bum of the Baal. And he had the capability to see from the part of the people. So Bilam told Balak, Built for me over here in this mountain seven altars. And I want you to get for me over here seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did what Bilam and I asked him for. And Balak brought, uh, offered Bilam par v'ayel par v'ayel He brought the uh, the bull and the ram on on the mizbech on each altar. Verse number two, the name of Bilam le Balak. And Bilam told Balak that Balak and Sechah stand here with your burnt offerings. Belcha and I will go. Ula Yika Hashem, maybe God will appear to me. Dava Mahirani and he will show me something that I can tell you. And I'll be able to tell you what God maybe shows me. Ayelik Shefi and he went himself. And Rashi said, why did he say, Ulai, maybe? He was a prophet. Because he's not a God. God does not talk to the prophets, especially the non-Jewish prophets, in the daytime. Well, actually, he is not accustomed to talk to me in the daytime, Bilam says. Ayel of Shefi. Shefi means he renders alone. Turned to Nate, easy and quietness. He was accompanied by nothing but quietness. Shefi. And God chanced upon Bilam. And he told him, I set up seven altars and I've offered a bull and a ram on each altar. So that's just, first of all, God chanced upon him. And his expression donates a casual meeting or occurrence. And it donates something shameful. Expression used in uncleanliness causes chant upon somebody. Reluctant and contempt he would never have appeared to him by day, but he wanted to show his love for Jews, and therefore God appeared to him by day. And Bilam told God, I prepared you seven altars. I prepared seven altars, it's not written here, but the seven altars. He said to him, Dear Patriarch, built seven altars before you, and I prepared seven conspiring to them all. Abraham built four. You find the four times in the Torah that Abraham built. For Isaac built one, and Jacob built two. So he said, together, the patriarchs, the three patriarchs, they built seven altars. I built in one day seven altars. And not only that, but I part of Ayelbam and Bech. I did even more than Abraham. Abraham offered only one ram. I offered a bull and a ram. So shouldn't I outrun the patriarchs? Verse 5, and God put something in his mouth. 
Let's be Bilam in the mouth of Bilam. Ayyem Meshuvah al Balak, he told him, return to Balak, Vesay Sidabit. And this is what you should tell him. He returned back, and Balak was standing next to his burnt offerings, he and all the Moabite dignitaries. And he started his parable and he said, Balak, the king of Mayach, has brought me from Aram. He came, brought me from the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse Jacob, come and invoke wrath against Israel. The Rash says, These two names, Yaakov and Yisrael, he told them to curse them with their two names. Or perhaps one of them was not the distinctive one. He thought maybe you can pick Yaakov or Yisrael to try to pick one that will work. But, Verse 8, Ma Akhoiv, how can I curse them? How can I curse like Kabael when God has not cursed? Ma Adam, and how can I invoke wrath like Zam Hashem when God is not angry? The Rashi says, How can I curse whom God has not cursed? Even when they deserve to be cursed, they are not cursed. Name when the father Jacob recalled their iniquities by saying, for their wrath, they have killed man. He cursed only their wrath. It says, curse is their wrath. So he always, the Abish only curses the, neg the, the, the sin. He does not curse a Jew, God forbid. God never curses a Jew, so how can I curse a Jew? When the father Jacob came in the seat to his father Isaac, he deserved to be cursed. But what does it say there? He too shall be blessed. Regarding those who bless, it says, they shall stand, be blessed people. And regarding who curse, it does not say, they shall stand to be cursed people. They shall stand for the curse. For he, God, did not want to mention the word curse in the reference to the Jewish people. Not only God doesn't curse the Jews, he does not get angry. What does that mean? I myself am powerless of Seth that I can determine the precise moment that God becomes angry. That was the professional, that was Bilaam's profession, professionality, specialty. Bilaam knew when God got angry. And he has not become angry all these days that have come to you. This is meaning a statement, the statement when he says later. I owe my people. Remember now that he, Balak, the king of planned and what Bilaam answered. May you recognize the righteous deed of the Lord. Verse number nine. From the beginning, for from the beginning, I see, I see them as mountain peaks. And I behold them as hills. Came Om Levadud Yishkein. It's a nation that dwell, dwells alone. And will not be reckoned amongst the nations. The Rashi says, what's the meaning of the verse? I look at their origins and the beginning of their roots and I see them established as powerful like mountains. So because the page they call the patriarchs mountains, their beginnings are mountains, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's a nation that dwells alone. This is the legacy their forefathers gained for them to dwell alone. They don't need anybody. And the Tiger Uncle's residence is a nation that is alone, destined to inherit the world. It doesn't need anybody. Later on, the Torah tells us, God said, I made a nation of it has everything in it. Kings and, 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 and holy people and prophets, they got it all. They don't need anybody. But by Goyim Le'ez Hashem, as the Tiger Lucas phrased it, they will not perish along the other nations. Nations will come and nations will go. The Jewish nation will last forever. But it says, for us, I make them... And so I make an end to all nations. 
they will not be reckoned with the rest. That's one way of, of, of what he meant. Another interpretation. When they rejoice, no other nation rejoices with them. As it says, God alone will guide them to future happiness. And when the nations prosper, they will receive a share with, with each one of them, but it will not be deducted from their account. And this is the meaning. And I will not reckon among the nations. Verse number 10. Minana afar Yaakov. Who counted the dust of Jacob? Who missed the Arabi Israel and the number of the, of the a fourth of Israel? Thomas Naps, you may see shot him. May my soul die the death of the upright. And may and let my end be like his. The Rashi says, what's the meaning? As Taiga Unclus renders, the children of, of the house of Jacob, concerning which states they shall be many as the dust of the earth. God told Jacob that the Jewish people will be like the dust of the earth. Of the four camps, referring to the four divisions, another interpretation of dust of Jacob, the number of mitzvahs they fulfill are like a dust, are, 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 with dust are innumerable. You shall not plow an ox with a donkey. You shall not sow your field with a mixture of seeds. The ashes of the red, red cow, the dust used a woman suspected of infidelity, and other sim similar things that we use, the dust. He didn't even use the dust for mitzvahs. Don't be count their good deeds that they use with the dust. The number of the seed. The word Reva, don't say the, 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 uh, <laughs> their, which seed, which issues that they have a lot. The English they gave them a multitude of seed in their relationships. Thomas Nafshi Meshishtara amongst them. I wish I could die like them. He gave him a Balak and Bilam. So Balak turned to Bilam and he told him, Marcitali, what are you talking about? What have you done to me? I took you to curse them. You're blessing them. Yeah, but yeah, and my yeah, my so verse 12. And he answered, Bilam said, Aloy, I say, Yasam Hashem, Bifi, or Bad puts in my mouth. I say, Eshmal Adab, and that's what I take it. And that completes the Chumash of today. Powerful, powerful, Pasha. Powerful. Okay, we are holding the fourth chapter in Igenis. Hatshuva. The Alter Rebbe just went through all the fast days, how we should do the fast days, all the sins that we have that I've done. Again, the Alter Rebbe comes back to the real core concept. And he says, However, all well, where we have referenced all the fasting and everything that we have spoken about is is only about the completion of of of, of, of the shuva. It's all about polishing the soul if the one does shuva, because when one does shuva, he needs to polish. He needs like a sacrifice. When a Jew brought a sacrifice to the base of Mikdash, so the Jew first did shuva. He needed to repent and then to polish the situation, to cleanse off the situation, he brought a sacrifice. But like my Gemara, as the Gemara explains in the, the tract of his Vachim, the Oila, that the concept of an Oila sacrifice, an Oila is a, is a burnt sacrifice, was brought, was brought for transgression of a positive command, is described as a gift offering. To the offended party, which is God, after the, after the Jew asked forgiveness for, for, for the sin he did. So he brought a carbon oil to buffer it. No, no, what's to, that's what so all these fasting are all like, a, like a, all these fasting that we mentioned are all like the sacrifices that we bring. We used to bring in the Beit Samikdash. We can't do it now, so we bring a sacrifice. So we so we fast. 
Onan tchilas mitzat shuva v'ikra, but the the, the 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 beginning. We're not talking about the end. What is the mitzvah of tshuva? What is the ikra, the most important sort, the most important beginning, and the core of tshuva? Repentance, la shuv adavaya, to return to God be'emes in truth. Ubelev shalim. With a complete, whole heart, a complete heart. That's what truth is. I'm not talking about the cleansing, the fasting. What is truth? But truth is not fasting. Truth is to return to God. And as soon become a parent, this return, literally, until God, Lashem Hat Hashem, to God, means returning until the point that one has restored completely. Completeness to Avaya, to God. The four letters of God's name that is found within every Jewish soul. Lashuv. Lashuv at Avaya. That's the possible. To return until God. Ad. The letters that comprise the tetragon are in the descending order Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. If I hate him, is this must now be explained. After we got through the uh, the fasting and the painful part of uh, the painful part that comes after one repents, you know, we'll worry about that another time. Let's talk about shuva. Let's not get lost in in the fastings and in these are uh, these in the, in the kapara. Let's get talk about repentance. Need to be explained thoroughly and comprehensively. Let's start off what the Zoya says. What Shuva is? Shuva with the Zohar explains the word Shuva. In a mystical way. And the Zoya says the word Shuva means Tashuv Hey. Shuva means to return the Hey. What does that mean? The function of tshuva is to return the letter hey. The letter, the God's name has four letters. Yud, hey, bug, hey. The last hey got lost. The last hey, the last day moved on. And as the after that business, I'm sorry, I'm jumping the gun too fast. So you have two hey's in that name. Yud, hey, bug, hey. Two hey's. And the Yud and the Vav. So the function should be to turn the letter Hey, the divine name of Vay, to re, re, reattach it to the level represented by the letter that precedes it. To connect the Hey to the Yud and the Hey back to the Vav. So Hey Tata, the lower Hey, the second Hey, is Chuba Tata, is the lower level of Chuba. Hey, La. That the, the first hay, which is called the upper hay, is shuva ilah, is the higher level of shuva. So that means there are two basic levels of shuva, though there are many, many levels, but we're dividing it down to that percent basically two shuvas. Shuva tata, the lower level of shuva, which is the second hay, and shuva ilah, which is the first hay. So we have to understand what that means. This is the, the Zoya. The al Rebbe is just saying what the Zoya says. Shuvi la, the higher level of Shuva, and Shuva Tata, the lower level of Shuva. Gam Ashikosu Zoya, and also what's written in the Zoya. Starts with Clavis in, in, in different places. Ain't Shuva may LS live game Brisa your mates that Shuva is in effect, ineffective. So you're right that shuva is ineffective for the covenant and for the wasteful emission of semen. This is one of the things that uh, brought down that a man, a man who uh, who, who, who uh, wasted the, the semen. And uh, the Zoya so writes, right. it's such a it's such a terrible sin. It's actually not mentioned one of the sins in the Torah, the cancer of the waste semen. Not one of the not one of the three hundred sixty-five negative commandments. 
And that's also a question of why it's not part of it. But it says it's not part of it because it's so, it's such a, a, a very deep rooted negative thing that it's not even, you can't even call it an aveda. It's, 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 it's so deep rooted and so, such a negative concept. So the Zoya writes that you can't do truth on such a thing. And how did ever says we dove to move This is very un- an understanding of the Zoya. Shame of Dover, even true, because we have a general rule. The general rule is nothing stands before Chuva. I feel I've made the of Gila Rice, even wish for an idol, you can do Chuva. Gila Rice, even in sensual sins of immorality, you can do Chuva. You can do Chuva at anything. Ain't love Dover and say Chuva. Nothing stands in front of Chuva. So give the command to give up the light rather than to regress these prohibitions of, of, of Aveda Zara. Yet repentance atones even them. If a Jew did worship Aveda Zara, he should have gave up his life. He worshipped an idol. He really should have gave up his life. He didn't do that. He worshipped it. He gave up his life and he did. He worshipped it. Nevertheless, Shuvah forgives him. The question is, what is the need of Zohar? Peter Shaysh's Chachma and this was put on the book of Shaysh's Chachma and explanation of the Zohar. Shakavonas Azoya, the intention of the Zohar that says that Shuvah does not help. It's Shuvah Tata. Is the lower level Shuvah does not help for such a sin. Kim Shuvah in love. Only the higher level of Shuvah helps for the sin of Malkadi, a person who does omissions. Which is a, a prohibited in the Torah, which is a ter- which is as is brought on the Zohar, a terrible sin. So ultimately, tshuva will help on this sin. So to have to grasp a minute glimmer of this, to understand the power of tshuva, that ain't love davar ain't fair tshuva, nothing stands before tshuva. Everything can be rectified through tshuva. Have uh, understand the power of tshuva. So I need to first make a preface. Start which explained in the verse. Even I've been saying the the teachings of the sages. Inyan akolas means bishmai. What means the person understand what means to be excision, kodes, be cut off, or misur bishmaiim and death by divine agency. Known in the Tata, this Tata mentions three kinds of death punishment. One is death by the court. The court is, oblig- is obligated to put a person to death, capital punishment by humans. And then you have a punishment by, by God. And there's two kinds of punishment by God. One is kores, to cut off. And one is to put to be death by God. So what is the difference? Of Rabbi Yishchai will have kodesh. If one violates a a a a kodesh, a, 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 a sin that 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 the Torah says you have kodesh, you must then that person dies before fifty. And when somebody is given the death of God from heaven, they die before 60. As a prophet, in Jeremiah, the story in, in the prophets. As a result of his false prophecy, God told him, I shall banish you from the face of the earth. That's Kodis. Um This resulted in his actual death. He died before 50. And sometimes, indeed, uh, the instances in which the punishment of death of a divine from heaven dies right away. For example, so the example in the Torah of omissions, prohibited, wasteful omissions, the two sons of, 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 of Yehuda. 
Yehuda had, had gave his daughter, uh, gave Tamar to to um, uh, to his son Er, and he didn't want to. Uh, he wanted to have a relationship with her, but he didn't want her to get pregnant. So he would he would make sure to to waste the seed. And he died, and then the brother married her, and he did the exact same thing, and he died. So there we see that's Misubide Shemaim. So they died right away. So that's the sin of that's Bide Shemaim. And God, so it's safe in heaven. That means everybody know you couldn't bring them to court and say, punishable by court that what they did. It's not punishable by Jewish court if a man has does omissions or doesn't want to impregnate his wife, he does he does prohibitions. They understand punished them. This involves a still occurring death by divine agency. In any event, both scripture and the sages attest that these guilty sins punishable by, again, Kodis, excision, or death by divine agency would actually die before they reach the age of 15, 16. So the question is asked. I, this leads to the final question. We all know the Gemara says this. But he needs to behold there with the open contradiction because we know there are many 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 people that have done all these sins and they had a long happy life open contradiction the torah says a person does a Jew talking about a Jew does this sin? I'm going to cut him off. A Jew does that sin? I'm going to put him to death from heaven. And uh, list to ninety-seven. And they didn't. They didn't die before fifty. They didn't die before sixty. What is the meaning? <laughs> is that an open contradiction? The Torah says the person will not live, and they live. So this is a this is a major question. On the Gemara, on, 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 Gemara, on the Torah, that it opens, you open, you see that people we have sinned and have done these, these sins and they're living, they're living long lives. So, what is the meaning? What is the meaning? What is the meaning of the simple meaning of the Torah? It's a contradiction on the Torah. This is a powerful question. It's that that, that ends the time of the day. We'll have to wait till tomorrow to the answer. The Alter Rebbe is going to give on this question. It's a very powerful question. Almost people can say, "Look, the Torah is not uh, the Torah is not true." Look, I've, 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 uh, people have done. I know people have done this sin. I know maybe I myself have done this. Like I was saying that. Look, I'm not, I'm ninety years old. I'm seventy. I'm eighty. I'm ninety. I'm living my life. So you, therefore, you see, almost has shalom to say the Torah is not correct. It's a very powerful thing. So. We have to know what's the meaning of, of, of how, do, how do we fix this kind of addiction. And Al Tadebe will fix it. Don't worry. We'll have to just have patience. That completes the Tanya of the day. Today is the 13th day of the month of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Tammuz. And uh, the film of today is. Still on a day is chapter 69. I'm hearing a, let me, a chapter 69, 70, 71, no, 69 to 71. So uh, that's the tillum of the day. If you do the tillum of the day, you would have done the task of the day. I want to wish you all a happy and happy as you give the comments in your celebration. Baba Shalev is Yamshuk and Golas. May, may this day be a day of redemption for the Jewish nation. And for all of us, we should only go and dance together to happiness, to joy, redemption. Yeah. Yeah. Let's and go. Yes. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I want to say that I'm starting, I believe, I want to work on it, to start a new class. I was inspired yesterday by the Fabrengen yes. that we had in the show. I want to uh, start a class in, in something that we all struggle with, and, and that is Betochen. And uh, the Lubavitch Kahas brought out a new book called The Gate to Trust. 
the gate to trust or the gateway to trust. It's a great book. It's on the it's on the book of Chayvus Alavavis, the, the the tractate of Betachan. I'm going to do that. I believe on a Sunday. We'll do it Sunday instead of the Chitas for a couple of months. We will learn Shad HaBetachan, the gateway to Betachan. Yeah. Bet- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's so exciting. And it's, come, and it's not going to be on Zoom. It's going to be on Chabad or on direct.com. So okay. I wish you all a great and wonderful day. God bless you all. Happy birthday to Moshe. Uh, yeah. yeah. Still? Yeah. I have I'm a year to go. Missed, yeah, I'm sorry I missed last night. Happy